Elizabeth from Elpis Astrology at alpisastrology.com. Thanks for joining me today. So this is going to be your short video uh, for the astrological forecast for November 2020 as I see it. Um, and remember, we all have free will. I'm going to be doing um, an extended longer video as well. <clears throat> and in that video, I'll be covering a couple things, um, but mainly I'll be focusing on the upcoming uh, December 21st, 2020. Um, Jupiter meeting up with Saturn to start a whole new 20-year cycle in Aquarius and I'll be covering all the ascendants at that time and uh, and or your Sun sign so watch for that coming next <clears throat> alright so November 2020 we have a new moon in Scorpio we have an eclipse season starting again so we'll have a full moon eclipse at 8 degrees of um, Gemini we have uh, Mercury retrograde will be going direct. Uh, we'll have Mars going direct. Um, and we'll have the Sun and Venus in Scorpio putting a more intense, uh, deep, introspective, investigative type hue on November 2020. So November's going to be um, intense as well, but in a different way. It's going to be, let's investigate behind what we've been finding out over the last few months. And indeed, there will be things that come out. It's funny because when I was thinking about this video, I, um, I just had this Dickens novel come to mind. And many of us would have had to read this uh, in high school or the equivalent. And that's The Tale of Two Cities. Um, and this, of course, was about the... Um, the revolution of France, um, as well as uh, what is now called the USA. Uh, mainly it took place in London, but it was involved with Paris as well. It was written in 1859, but it covered the time period of 1775 to 1782, and I think this was very apropos for November. In fact, I would suggest you might want to read this book if you've not read it. You can actually get um, videos as well. There's a video done or a movie done on this at various time periods throughout the decades. I'll put a link for Wikipedia and that'll help you follow whatever else you might want to follow. But we'll all remember this quote because it's been quoted a lot. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. And in many ways, as we uh, come into and go through November, we may actually have that saying in our minds because there's lots of great things that will be coming about as well. I mean, certainly, <clears throat> the main uh, theme of this novel, uh, The Tale of Two Cities, was one of vision, uh, of resurrection. And we don't hear that word used very often, resurrection, and transformation, right? Now, this is for society, which, if you look back on your history, certainly was a big change, but also personally. So this is what we've been undergoing most of this year is these big transformations uh, but also resurrection and I thought about it and I thought that the resurrection part of it and please feel free to leave your comments as to how you think it affects you but I thought generally speaking the resurrection is the resurrection of ourselves of our individual selves being equally important to everyone else and then that transformation will be all of us transforming together, including our structures. All right, I'll leave it at that, and now I'll get into the actual moons. Okay, so we have the new moon at 23 degrees of Scorpio, 17 minutes. So this is a happy new year to all you Scorpios and Scorpio risings. This will occur on the 14th of November at 9.07 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. <clears throat> we have a few things going on at this. So a new moon means that the moon and the sun will be together. And it will sextile both Jupiter and Pluto, both obviously still in Capricorn. And this just sets up some nice opportunities for us to... Um, I feel that the Jupiter part of it is not only expanding the transformation of Pluto, and remember Pluto is now direct, so this is a power back into our hands, um, so I just think these are nice outcomes that are going to turn up for us regarding, as we know, the structures uh, that are surrounding us. I think these are going to be opportunities for us at this new moon to change some of those structures more easily and be given choices. That's what I thought that sextile was. 
giving us choices here, what do you want to do? And of course this will apply to our personal lives too. Now we have Mercury uh, that is direct now, and it will be opposing Uranus at this time. So again, we have a big reveal, but a more important reveal because this Mercury is now direct. Uh, the things that needed to be uncovered are going to be very crystal clear to us. All the secrets will be coming out and things that we needed to know actually revealed for us. There may be some important communications as well um, regarding things that, um, who knows, may have been hidden for a very long time, maybe decades, that will come out and help us understand things more clearly. Um, this also quincunxes Chiron, so this says, yes, we can utilize this for our healing, either personally or collectively, um, but we may have to go about it in a different way. Quincunxes are also about that. <coughs> we have Venus, which will be squaring both uh, Jupiter and Pluto, but trining the north nodes of the moon at this new moon in Scorpio. <coughs> I would take this as um, something presents itself as an obstacle, that's that square part of it, um, that seems insurmountable, but if we just say, what will help me get me on my collective destiny path, as what will help me get me on my individual destiny path, if we use that kind of thinking, we will get through this. So this is out of the box. We have to think outside that box thinking with regards to, so Venus type things. So this will be Venus, um, this will be Venus with love, okay, love relationships, uh, but it'll also be our money as well and perhaps our values. And perhaps this will be um, an obvious shining of light of a new way where we can actually change our values collectively. But we're going to have to do it in unique types of ways, but we can do it. It's getting us all together um, and doing it as, as one. But Pluto's still going direct here. Uh, there's positiveness around this. And the trine is always favorable energy with the north nodes of the moon. So this is some kind of destiny. Um, this is like a course correction. That's what I get this as. Not a difficult course correction. Venus always uh, is lends some nice energy to it. And of course, Jupiter is a benefic as well, and he's also going direct at this time. We have Uranus trining Vesta, <coughs> so this may just bring some, some nice things with regards to um, our Earth and how we can make some unique adjustments again, but some favorable ones. Maybe we'll be hearing about new ways of um, growing crops, and uh, maybe permaculture will start becoming an in thing. I've left some links for a woman that's in Western Ireland, um, Colette O'Neill at Belton Cottage, which has done an awesome job at transforming a property, and I think she's well worth watching many videos of. We have Neptune that'll be squaring the north nodes of the moon. So here we've got um, a trine, and then we've got a square. And again, I think this goes back to us having some challenges here uh, with regards to being compassionate that's where I think this Neptune comes in, is compassion, um, where we have to incorporate a deep sense of compassion and true understanding of mankind here, uh, not just for the individual um, who may seem to have power. That power is going to be distributed here more evenly, and we're going to get evidence of that. That's what I think this new moon, I mean, let's not forget, Scorpio is ruled by Pluto, uh, and co-ruled by Mars, uh, both of whom are direct right now. So I see this as a positive new moon here, even though we may have some obstacles to, you know, go around. So when we look at this uh, Pluto, which is the ruler of the new moon in Scorpio, um, I just wanted to kind of make a statement um, that Pluto asks us to uncover, right? And then the Jupiter, which is close by, strives to find that truth. And I think with them both being direct, the word truth, the truth is going to come out for us individually, should we choose to accept it, and for us collectively. Now this is all around in the United States, the um, election time period. Um, there will cert it'll certainly be fraught with things 
uh, that may not be um, helpful um, or welcome. Uh, but I think this new moon is going to indicate something here for us that I think is very good, but everyone's going to have to cooperate. And um, I do see cooperation here, even though some folks may have to be uh, cajoled into that. So at this whole Scorpio that I talked about, the Scorpio influence over November, there's going to be a tendency for us to be obsessive possessive. So that's kind of the default some of us will be going to. Um, just see what uh, was uncovered at that whole Mercury retrograde, mainly in Scorpio. Um, on the 20th of November, Mercury retrograde will be out of its shadow. Um, but will also be under that influence of the Mercury uh, opposing Uranus. So again, we go back to that unexpected things being revealed to us. Now, these unexpected things being revealed to us certainly could be some um, clamoring uh, skeletons coming out of the closet, but it can also be our psychological self. So it could be a time when some of us individually wake up and realize what's holding us back and realize that we can change that. And most of that's going to be around taking our power back. I spoke about taking our power back in a video that I did on this whole Mercury retrograde in Scorpio and Libra. I'll leave links to that should you want to um, take a look at it. So we have the full moon eclipse, which is going to be on the 30th November. And that starts the eclipse again, eclipse season again. And that's at 8 Gemini 38 minutes at 1.28 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. The main thing that stood out for me uh, at this time uh, was that we have the Sun uh, will be quincunxing Uranus. So this is going to make um, us see um, something that's uh, an inconvenient truth. That's what I came up with, an inconvenient truth. And most of us that are old enough will remember that Al Gore was referring to a video that he put together with regards to climate change and the effect it's having on us. And I think that's going to be coming up here, where a lot more of us are going to be saying what we think about that, um, and maybe even taking action on it. Um, let's hope the people in power actually um, take some concrete movement forward to save our Earth. Um, we have a couple of things that are going to be happening in 2021 that will be activating this eclipse again. So again, I said the eclipse is on the 30th of November, but August 2021, we're going to have the north nodes of the Moon uh, coming towards the last degrees now of um, Gemini. But it'll be at that eight degree mark. So you can earmark that on your calendar. August 2021, we may have something come back. Whatever was revealed at this full moon eclipse in November, uh, there will be an echo of something where it will point to why that was important for us at that time, whatever came to light at that time. Okay, so it'll be individual and collective. On May 2021, so also mark this time, we will have both Mercury and Venus at this point of eight degrees uh, of Gemini. And we'll first have Mercury hit that, and then we'll have Venus. So I see this maybe uh, tied in with our money, our money systems, uh, where we hear uh, more news about how we're really affected uh, by our money systems. And that's what I see that May 2021 bringing to light for us, uh, with both Mercury and Venus hitting it. All right, so we finished off the month, uh, um, which is just before that whole full moon eclipse. And that's going to be where we have this final Jupiter conjunct Pluto for the very last time. I did a whole video on the series of conjunctions of both Jupiter and Pluto, if you want to look at it. I will put that also in the text below. Uh, but that happens on the 28th of November. And I see this also as positive, uh, too. And this is also supporting that whole bringing the truth to the surface. Um, and, and we may also have literally things coming on our earth to the surface that we have to address as well. Not sure exactly what that will be, but that also could be physically happening in our world. But at the very least, this is with both these planets, Jupiter and Pluto, going direct right now and conjuncting for the last time. 
Um, this really does say, um, you know, we do have to look at the truth, even though it may be inconvenient, as I mentioned earlier on in the video. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for my longer video where I will be covering that whole um, Jupiter conjuncting Saturn in Aquarius. And I'll also cover some of the big squares that are going to be happening in 2021 too. Please take care of yourself as always. Um, I'm always thinking of everybody and lots of love to you all. Uh, leave me comments as per usual. I always enjoy hearing from you. Take very good care of yourself and bye for now.